Yeah. Speaking of that, let's talk about SmackDown. What did you think of uh, the show overall? I didn't see the whole show. I'm going to watch it first thing in the morning because I was away for two days. But um, I saw, I, I mean, I saw a lot of the show. Um, what I saw was very good. Um, you know, but I, you know, went through. Well, I, I did see the Bray Wyatt thing with with um, L.A. Knight, and and that was kind of really silly. But poor L.A. Knight, what's going to happen to this guy? But you know, here's the, you know, yeah, I mean, he's a stepping stone and everything like that. But but what was he really ever going to do? You know what I mean? It's kind of like he's getting more exposure than I expect him to get on the main roster with a higher level opponent than I expected him to ever get. So um, the fact that in the end, it's probably not going to be good for him as far as, you know, that it's probably, you know, exposure wise, it's probably better than anything else he was going to get. But yeah, you know, everybody who works with Bray Wyatt, it's uh, very few of them come out looking better. You know, it's just the, the nature of the beast. And I don't know where they're going with this this thing with him now um but uh it's like you know he came in and he meant a lot and i I think his first match on tv is probably going to mean something um did they go with him in roman i could see roman wanting nothing to do with this guy um you know and and then if it and if if it's not being built for roman then uh, then he's got a you know he's got he's got a limit of how far he can go um you know if if roman doesn't agree to work with him obviously roman's you know in a completely different place right now you know with kevin owens and sammy Zayn, and um you know so so you know i mean as far as that went you know the thing building up that that you know that whole show thong thing i thought was good and uh rick shane gunther was a great match and um that's most of what i saw i saw hit rose i saw the um Top dollar dive. He's lost so much weight. My God. But, you know, he tried to do that dive. And I mean, it's like he could have gotten hurt really bad, but he yeah. didn't, you know. Um, I, I I just, you know, the the whole thing, the botch, and he goes over. And like, it's like, okay, like he screwed up. Big deal. But then everybody bumped for it. And it made it look even worse. And then yeah. Michael, Michael Cole was like. Yeah, that's why he doesn't do that very often or he said something like that that's what he said yeah yeah and i was just i was so i was kind of bummed out for him because like man that that's really embarrassing and i know especially people, now well people were people were all over him for of course they were yeah they were In saying this- oh you're lying because he said his leg went out as he was doing the dive and he was trying to say that you know i've been doing that when i was way heavier and, and he even and showed so, a, he even showed a tape of him at that 360 or whatever yeah. he was doing that move clean and yeah. uh Maybe his leg went out. Maybe just he just didn't clear the ropes. Yeah, yeah. You know. All right, quickly, let's just go through the results here. Um, damage control beat Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox uh, when a a person in a hoodie attacked Tegan Knox, which allowed uh, EO to hit the moonsault for the win. I thought this match was kind of slow. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really think it was that good. Um, I think. Did they say that the person in the hoodie was was Zia Lee? Did they already give it away? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think because they were talking about Zia Lee later in the show. Yeah, that's why I was kind of like, wow, you you know, you have this secret person and then you just randomly give that person away with really, you know, un- I mean, no I, unveiling. I, yeah, yeah. I, I just heard them talk about Zia Lee when, when in some of the stuff that I saw, you know, yeah. I thought the build to Gunther and, uh, and Ricochet was, was really good. Uh, like you said, the whole s- storyline of, um, Sami Zayn, they they were thinking that maybe he was going to have the honorary taken off of of his name, and he was just going to become an oos. So that was the whole setup. Um, you mentioned the Bray Wyatt L- LA Knight segment. Uh, I re- I just I, f- I feel bad for this guy. Uh, and then the Gunther match, you know, for a match in which the heel takes about sixty percent of it, seventy percent of it, and you yeah, they- and you're not really feeling that the babyface is going to win. I still thought this was a really good match. I thought it was really good. You know, I mean, they, you know, they gave Ricochet enough and enough stuff that you didn't expect him to do. And they're, you know, they're definitely treating him far more seriously than they did like before under Vince. So even, even in losing, it's not like you're looking at it. I mean, and he always, he's lost multiple times to the guy. So, um, you know, in, in a sense, if you're doing the 50, 50 booking, it was his turn but 
you know, they, that's not what they, that's not the direction that they were going. It's so there may be less like my turn, your turn booking going forward. That could be something that we're looking at that's different, but, um, but they took him seriously and, and, you know, they, they gave him like the last one, they gave him a lot of time to have a really good match. And when he lost, it wasn't like, you know, he lost in seven minutes and, and, you know, you just kind of like when it's over, you just kind of go, ah, you know, he's not even anything special. It's like, he still felt, he felt like he was a real star when you lose a long, very good match. I think that that, you know, I don't want to say it doesn't hurt you because sometimes it does, but, but I don't, it didn't hurt. My perception of him uh, was not hurt by the fact that he lost this match. Because I didn't like again. You don't expect him to win it anyway. And I think they're setting up uh, Braun and Ricochet against Imperium. Yeah. Uh, so Adam Pierce was in Roman Reigns' locker room. Heyman wanted Pierce to set up uh, Reigns and Sammy against Kevin Owens and a partner of his choosing for December thirtieth. That person turned to into John Cena, and John Cena did a, a promo at the end of the show. The, the guy comes back and he he feels like a like a giant star. They they call giant him the, star. the greatest of all time, and he's you that's know the, that's their catchphrase for him. So I, I do expect. I mean, December thirtieth is a weird day because uh, I don't know how you know the holiday will affect the numbers. But my feeling when they announce that is that this will be one of the biggest SmackDown numbers of the year, um, and the quarter with that match will be very very big um, because you know John Cena is real special you know like we know from last summer he moved numbers we know yeah. when he came back on raw that one night they sold out you know the show and they're going to sell out tampa i mean they've moved a lot of tickets they've moved like maybe two thousand tickets i believe since that announcement was made not the announcement um of the match i haven't seen the ticket movement since the announcement since friday but i saw it leading up to friday and um, when they announced cena you know um you know that he would be there just be there not do a match um, they moved a lot of tickets for that one. Um, I mean, you, you know, the interesting thing, you know, when, when it came to the Chicago thing, that was so interesting to me, you know, they saw they legit sold out Chicago it was over 12,000 paid. Um, when the AW show, which was at Wintrust and the WWE show at Allstate Arena, um, you know, which AW was on sale a couple weeks earlier, but, you know, like at the same time, you know, they were both about you know, low 5,000s and tickets sold for weeks. You know, it's like they both started in the same clip and AEW kind of stayed, you know, they moved up and, you know, they were over five and they end up at 5,700. WWE starts a little over five, then it grows a little and a little and a little and they end up at 12. And I mean, it's like really interesting, like the, the uh, you know, like the first day, like a lot of WWE first days don't look good, but the numbers move and move and move. And AEW, it's so much like if the first day is not good, they never catch up and they never sell a lot of late tickets. I don't say never, but far less. And I think some of it, a lot of it is that WWE spends a lot more on advertising the market and whether that's mm -hmm. cost effective for AEW. I'm sure that they've experimented and, you know, um, Raphael Morphy's their guy. I'm sure he's experimented and, and probably they found that a ton of advertising may not be cost effective. And there was times with WWE when it comes to like house shows and stuff where they found the same thing, where there was a period where they cut way back and just went to only advertising on the TV show because they felt that the advertising on radio and things like that was not bringing in the revenue commensurate with the expense of the advertising. But it's gone back and forth. But now WWE is doing a lot of advertising late for a lot of these events. And it is, especially with the higher ticket prices, it is paying off. Um, you know, this, the house shows are profitable again, which at one point, not all that long ago before the pandemic, we had quarters where they were losing money run, going on, on tour. And now, you know, they are making money going on tour. But it's just interesting to me how, you know, again, like WWE is able to sell and sell and, and sell tickets all the way and then get, you know, maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred walk up in some markets. And AEW just can't do that. They can sell tickets at the beginning, but it's almost like the AEW has got a certain fan base and. One, and that fan base will buy tickets as soon as the show is announced, but not a lot of other people are going to do it. And and maybe that's because WWE is the brand name. Um, because you know, again, with these other shows, like the Chicago show, it wasn't like anything special was announced. And 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 you know, 
but they did really, really well for the double taping. Um, and um, by the way, um, tomorrow for the Raw, it is only a single taping from what I was told um because what was two weeks ago it was like it's either going to be a double taping or and then a best or or it will be a single taping and a best of show on the 26th because they're not taping on the 26th hmm. so i i guess it's a i i haven't been told it's a best of show but when i was told two weeks ago it's gonna be one or the other it is the it is certainly not the one because i was told uh today that that they are taping one show tomorrow hmm interesting uh, so, uh, yeah, Hit Row beat uh, Legado del Fantasma and the Viking Raiders. Uh, there was a Raquel Rodriguez injury, and she got attacked by uh, Shayna and Ronda. Um, and then, yeah, and then I guess that was the, uh, the John Cena segment ended the show. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. <laughs> this is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.